Hi everyone. The control of dissonance and other principles and rules for writing five-part modal counterpoint are essentially the same as writing for fewer parts. To achieve a vertical five-part texture, however, two notes of a triad may be doubled or one note may be tripled. Often it is the root note and fifth which will be doubled and the root note will be tripled. However, as always, the overall contour and direction of a part assists in determining which note or notes to choose. For example, in the following five-part excerpt by Lussus, here where the shape of the tenor and bass is thematic entries, with the bass using the same theme as those used by the other parts, and the tenor using a shortened version beginning on the theme's second note, the root note of this G major triad is tripled as the tenor and bass both enter with G, which is already sounding in the first cantus. In the following bar also, the theme's contour means that here the C major triad's root note is also tripled. In five-part textures, root position chords are still the norm, although first inversion chords are also found. In the five-part section concluding this work, for example, Lassus uses a first inversion D major triad, which here sounds as the final of D Dorian with a raised third. Use of a first inversion chord in this instance lessens the cadential quality of the A to D progression, which would here detract from the final cadence. As in textures of fewer parts, in five-part textures the raised leading note should not be doubled, nor should the resolution of upper part 7, 6 and 4, 3 suspensions. Here at this cadence, for example, this raised F sharp only appears in the second cantus part, and the resolution of this 4, 3 suspension only sounds in the first cantus. As always, however, exceptions do occur. Here, for example, Lassus sounds this 4-3 suspension's resolution in the alto, but ensures there is an octave between the resolution and the sounding D, while the following suspension's resolution, which moves to a raised leading note, is not doubled. In five-part works, because of an increase in parts, occasionally dissonances which would not be allowable in textures of fewer parts, or are used only infrequently, may be found. Dissonant usage may also vary between different composers. For example, Lussus here to stagger these parallel fifths between the tenor and bass parts sustains this G, allowing the tenor and bass to move as a series of 6-5 intervals. He then doubles the tenor line with the first cantus, thereby creating 4-3 suspensions, but also forming momentary apparent second inversion chords on the bar's first and third quarter note beats. These second inversion chords in a texture of fewer parts would clearly be unacceptable, and even here other composers may have avoided this writing. Lussus's freer use of dissonance may also be seen near the beginning of this work, where here the second cantus leaps to D, creating an apparent second inversion D major triad. Here, however, this D should probably be heard as an appoggiatura, with the actual harmony sounding as a first inversion diminished triad to G. This usage of an appoggiatura is nevertheless not common in Renaissance works. A further instance of Lussus's freer dissonant treatment can be seen in bar 25 of the same work, where here the first and second cantus parts move in fourths.
In five-part textures, as in textures of fewer parts, apart from the exceptions already discussed, dissonances tend to be approached and left by step, while harmony notes may be approached and left by step or by leap from another harmony note. As in four-part textures, in textures of five parts, the parts often move in pairs or interact with voice exchange. Here, for example, the first and second cantus parts use voice exchange to prolong the C, which acts as a common note connecting the underlying harmonies. With this voice exchange, the cantus parts also cross, so that the notes of the exchanges are effectively repeated. On the first and third quarter note beats, the second cantus and bass move in octaves, which are broken by the intervening moves to G in the cantus and B in the bass, and the alto and bass interact in thirds. Here also, a voice exchange, where again the parts cross, prolongs B-flat major harmony, while the first and second cantus parts essentially interact in thirds. In textures of five parts, cadences increasingly resemble those in use today, with root movement by fifth or fourth between the penultimate and final chord being typical. This cadence, for example, resembles a perfect cadence in G. This one, an imperfect cadence in D. And to end the work, Lussus uses a cadence resembling a plagal cadence in D. As in works of four parts, here the percentage of the work using a sustained five-part texture is relatively small. Even in the excerpts we've been considering, the five-part texture will often be momentarily reduced to four parts. As always, a full five-part texture is typically introduced at the beginning, when all parts enter, and leading up to cadences. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.